Hello everyone, this is the Virginia Bush Doctor. I am here at the meetup that is hosted by no one other than my mother Sparks. Hey! So first of all, I gotta tell you guys, we're having a marvelous time out in the rain. We've harvested a lot of wood. We've sweat. We've slept. It's been awesome so far. So what I want to do today is talk to you about the 10 C's of bushcrafting, and then I'm going to go. I'm going to go through some of the practices that I do, and I'm also going to use some notes because there is a long list of bushcraft bushcrafting items, and I want to get, be as complete as I can. So the first 10 C that I'm going to start off with is a cutting tool. Now keep in mind that there is a lot of redundancy in a cutting tool. So the first cutting tool that I personally always take into the bush with me is a hatchet. I'm always going to take a hatchet because this is a chopping tool. I basically use this to I basically use this to split wood, chop wood, so on and so forth. If I don't have this, I bring a large machete. So this is one of the cutting tools that I bring. And I think even if I'm out for a day, a, 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 a hatchet is going to come with me. The next cutting tool that I'm always going to have is a large knife. Now when I say a large knife, I'm speaking of anything that is up to 10 inches. So this is a large knife. That's huge. It's a 10 inch, has a 10 inch cutting blade. One of the reasons I like this knife is because of the belly that's on it. Uh, the portion here. I can use it for spinal work. It has a 90 degree spine on it. It's overall a good knife. So this, again, is a 10 inch knife that I use for chopping medium to small branches. So this is the first knife. The second knife that I always bring with me is I always bring with me a smaller knife that is about four inches. This knife is basically used for fire making, uh, feather sticks, and the reason that it's a good knife and the reason I use it is because it has a Scandinavian grind on it. Now keep in mind for a bush crafter, the ideal length of a knife is five to six inches. That is the ideal length of a blade for a bush crafter. So for me, anything that is four inches or less is a small knife. Anything that is four inches to seven is a medium knife. And anything from seven to 10 is a large knife Anything over 10 is a, a machete or a chopper. So, the next cutting tool that I have is a saw. This is a Corona saw. And it cuts, uh, it says up to six inches, but I've cut up to 12 inch long with this Corona knife, Corona saw. So, it's always important to have a saw. And, as a backup, I always carry a multi-tool that is gonna have another cutting edge. Uh, and also, what's important is another saw. So these are my cutting tools. Uh, 
so again the cutting tool it's either going to be a hatchet axe or a large machete a large knife a smaller knife a multi-tool and a saw now that's my cutting tool now the next uh, seed that I have is cover cover consists of three components the first thing that I'm going to do for cover I'm going to make sure I have something to sleep on something to sleep in and something to sleep under so these are three trash bags that I can fill with leaves and that and try to get it at least four inches when it's compacted this should be four inches these three should be four inches what I would do then is use a bedroll to put on top of the plastic bags that are filled with leaves that's going to give me something to sleep on the next component is going to be something to sleep in and that's going to usually be starting with my clothes of course, the clothes are the first thing you make sure you have. I hope so. Yeah. Not that kind of party. Exactly. <laughs> but some some type of bivy uh, bag or sack. Now this is just one that I've used as an emergency. Uh, I have others, but this is my lard on the inside. So I'm going to have something to sleep on, which is going to be the trash bag with leaves, the bedroll. I'm going to sleep in the baby sack, and I'm going to cover myself with a wool blanket. I find this to be most efficient, a wool blanket. And after I've completed that, I have to have something to sleep under, which is going to be a tarp. And this is the tarp that I basically use, a 5x7. And if you look here, this is my lark as well. So again, my cover consists of three trash bags, a bedroll, something to sleep in. It's going to be my lark, baby bag, wool blanket, and the tarp. So that is the second seat. The third C I, I use is container. Your containers are going to be your canteen. Preferably single wall because I can actually put this into a fire and use it to boil water, to cook my food. I can actually heat this up, put it with me to sleep with. Uh, and, it, and it's always good to have a nesting cup. So I can heat something up, pour it in here. And then I'll always have a second one. This is a 32 ounce single wall. And if there is a nesting cup. And it also has a top on it. So those are the containers. But in addition to these containers, a container is anything that you can put your supplies in. So that can be another rucksack, which is a container, or it can be a backpack. These are also considered containers. So again, containers are your canteens, your rucksack, your backpack, anything that can hold your supply. Uh, the next thing that I have is cordage. Now, the most prevalent cordage is 550 paracord. And I usually, I'm, I overdo it. I usually take about 300 yards of paracord. I can sometimes exceed 100 easily. The good thing about this paracord, it has seven strands in it. And you can use this paracord for um, fishing, fire starter, trapping, 
numerous things that you can use this paracord for. So uh, I also bring number 36 bank line. This bank line is tarred and I use this if I want to make a tripod. This, this bank line is expendable. Use it once and that's about it. I've used it to make fires. Uh, it's a good cordage to have. Now my third cordage is mule tape. Uh, polyester, grabber tape. This, this particular mule tape holds up to 2,500 pounds, which I have learned that if you take that divided by 10 times two, that's the actual uh, static weight or tensile weight. So I've used this, be this before to actually make suspended beds. So this is part of the cordage. So again, the cordage that I take with me is 550 paracord, number 36 bank line and mule tape. Okay, so the next seed that I take with me is a combustion, combustion device. Now the best device that I have found is a ferrocium rod. You're always going to get a spark to light the tender which is going to light your kindling, that will light your fuel, and of course you're going to have your oxygen. So the one that I have comes with a striker, a can opener. This also you can uh, scrape wood off, uh, scrape wood to make tender. But the good thing about it, you're going to get very good sparks from this all the time. Rain, snow, sleet, or shine. So this is my favorite combustible device. And again, there's a lot of redundancy. Another thing that I use is flint and steel. I have the flint here and the steel. And every time you use this, you're removing metal off the steel. So just basically use one of the edges and you can see the sparks there. Now the spark, in order to, the reason I use this is when I am using char cloth. By placing the char cloth on top of the flint, As you see, there's an ember to stick into the tender, and you have you have your fire starting right there. <clears throat> the next method that I use is, and it's always good to have it with you. I don't use them often, but it's to have a lighter. That you want to make sure it works. <laughs> now, why do I have a lighter? If I want to light a candle, this lighter is going to be much more efficient. And if the lighter gives out, I'm always going to have matches. You don't want the matches that break, but So you're going to have your matches. So again, you're going to have your fair sim rod, flint and steel, lighter, and matches. The next C is cotton. So why would we think of cotton? Well, first of all, I always carry two bandanas. These bandanas can be used as char cloth, they can be used as a 
marker. They can be used as a rescue tool. And another thing about them, if you're out right in the bush all day, you have time to study. You also can use these to filter your water. So I always carry two of them. And again, my philosophy is one is zero, two is one. Also, you can use these to help you stay warm. And another uh, cot, piece of cotton I take is a shimar. This shimar can help to keep you warm. You can carry things. Uh, you can load wood in it and carry it back. You can scrape your tender off of it. It can be used for first aid. There are a number of things that you can use a shamog for. So that is part of my uh, cotton. The next C is cargo tape. Now you may say, why would you need tape in the bush? Well, this cargo tape can be used, this cargo tape can be used as tender to start a fire. It can be used in first aid. It can be used to repair clothing. It can be used to uh, help build your shelter. So this is a very, very important C. This is a very important C, the cargo tape. Okay, the next C is candle. Now when I speak of candle, again, I'm literally speaking of a candle. I always take some form of a candle into the bush with me. But actually when we speak of candle, we're speaking of anything that has light. Which is going to be a headlight. And with the headlight, you always want to make sure that you have a strobe. You want to make sure that you have a strobe on your headlight. As well as something that is also a different color, green or red. In addition to a different light, there is a light. And most of all, if you ever separate it from those lights, you're always going to have a flashlight at all times. So that is, those go up under the candle. Uh, the next item is a canvas needle. Now, this is a canvas needle. It can be used for stitching your clothes or your tarp. And you can use number 36 bank line with this canvas needle. I've never had to use it before, hopefully I won't, but canvas needle is very important. You also can, um, I understand that you can use it with a battery and um, that's something that you can actually make a fire with these or use it as a compass. So that's the 14 inch canvas needle. The next thing that I think is very, very important is a compass. This compass this compass comes with a side-in mirror. This side-in mirror can be used as signal. It also helps you when you are doing your bearing. You can actually see your angles or degrees here. And it also can be used, they have some compasses that have a magnifying glass that can be used to help start the fire. But as a backup, I've been using a GPS system until I am very, very proficient with this. Now the thing I would say about a GPS system, they're good, they're good, but there are times that you may not get a signal. 
or you think you have enough energy and you have one bar. This has happened to me. So that's why I'm recommending that learn to use the compass as best you can. Uh, the next item that I have is have a first aid kit. You cannot go wrong without having a first aid kit. Now this is beyond the 10 C, but a first aid kit as well as a slingshot. Why would you say a slingshot? Because you never know when you're in in a survival mode and you may have to use a pebble to harvest a squirrel or anything else so a slingshot is something good to have as well as well as some type of shovel sure you can have a digging stick but a shovel is very handy some form of shovel this one has a saw it has a hammer, it has a bottle opener, and it has a wrench. In addition, it has a compass and a fishing kit on the inside. The last item that I have uh, is a sharpening tool or sharpening stone. What I carry with me is a sharpening tool that I can take out and I can actually sharpen serrated edges knife. here can be sharpened with this. Also, by taking this tool, turning it around, I can sharpen any small knife or any large knife. And I always carry a ceramic rod with me when I just want to bring the edges of my knife back together. So, those are the tools that I always take with me in the bush. Now, when I go into the bush, I basically have a pattern. When I get to my location, the very first thing that I do, I hang my rucksack up off the ground. I hang this up. This allows me to get to my materials a lot easier if they're here. The next thing that I do is I build my shelter. I want to make sure that I'm somewhere safe, that I do have shelter. From there, I'm going to ensure that I have water. I'm going to bring sufficient water with me if I'm going to be at a location that I know water is at a distance. So I'm going to have sufficient water or I'm going to go to a location with, with water. The next thing I'm going to make sure that I have is food. I want to make sure if I'm going for a day, that I at least have food for a day and a half. The next thing that is so important to me is a fire. If I get to a location and my uh, shelter is completed by 9 o'clock, and I'm going to be there overnight, I'm going to be harvesting wood all day until about uh, and I'll before it's dark. So I'm gonna make sure that I have enough fire because for me the ultimate thing about bushcrafting is basically surviving and making sure you have a fire because that fire is gonna make you comfortable. It's gonna keep predators away. It's just something that's serenity and it's just fun. So that's basically my bushcrafting story. But I started bushcrafting because I did some hunting and I watched this one channel, a guy named Dave from Really Big Monkey, and I saw him make a bed out of 100 feet of paracord. I tried it, it worked, 
and I've gone bushcrafting ever since. So that's my story as a bushcrafter. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll continue to do it for as long as I can. All right, thanks. And thank you, my mother Sparks, for having me.